He's such a cute little hammer. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Uh, a few days ago I put out a, uh, a video on making this hammer. It was kind of an artistic video and it was uh, just a fun one for me. And if you like those artistic videos with a lot of music, I'll leave a link to that one down below. Uh, but this one I actually want to go through and talk about what I did and why I did it and some of the tools I used. So uh, let's dive into making a cute little hammer. A while ago I made this small hammer for adjusting hand planes and I really liked it. But at the same time I picked up that head, I also picked up this little red head. And I don't know exactly what it is, probably from a kid's toy or um, something of that nature. But I figured let's make a little handle for this. It's, it's needing a handle. I have this piece of red oak, um, curly red oak that I stained uh, with iron and vinegar. And so it has a very dark look on the outside but the inside it's still the raw wood. So after cutting it to length and ripping it down, I can put the head on the end and trace out the eye so I know about the shape it needs to be. Then I can come in with the spoke shave and round out the end, getting close to those marks and uh, checking it with the hammer head occasionally and making sure that I'm not getting too much, but I'm getting close to that eye fit. Once I can fit it down on there a ways, I can push it on and then pull it off and then I'll be able to see exactly where there are red marks uh, left on the head. Those red marks from the paint inside allow me to then come and file off. And I want to file off those red marks and not the areas where there aren't any red marks. That way I know I'm taking off the high spots and not the low spots until I get a nice fit and seat on the, uh, the head as it goes down. Once I have it down and I'm happy with how it fits, I'm going to cut a slot for a wedge. Some people like to cut this at a diagonal or across the head. I like to cut it lengthwise um, down the eye, but in this small of a case it really doesn't matter. I have a tiny piece of ebony that I thought would make a great little wedge for it. So uh, yeah, I'm using ebony for the wedge. <laughs> but uh, with a little bit of uh, careful cutting, I cut this uh, tiny little angle uh, from about a 16th inch wide at the top down to zero at the bottom. And then we can drive on the head and fit in the wedge. Once the, the head is on, then it's just a simple matter of tapping in. I figured it would be kind of fun to use the other mallet to uh, drive in the wedge for this hammer. After that's done, I can cut it off flush, and then it's time to go on to shaping the handle. Uh, a lot of people like to shape the handle before seating the head. Um, in this case, it really doesn't make much difference. I just wanted to draw on a shape that I really liked, and uh, kind of came up with like a framing hammer shape as opposed to a finishing hammer. Most of the material um, I can remove with a saw and get it to a general shape easily and quickly. But then the, the rounded corners and the actual organic feel of the hammer, I brought most of that down to shape with a spoke shave. And the spoke shave just allows you to take off a decent amount of material fairly quickly and uh, contour to the shape you're looking for. After that, I can uh, continue all the way around it, and then I'm going to go through a series of rasps and files, much like how I did for making the tote for a plane. So if you want to see that, you can uh, go see far more detail in shaping an organic uh, shape with rasp and file. But I'll just do it with a really coarse grain, and then a finer grain, and then a finer grain, and then eventually I'm just going to bring it over and sit down and go at it with a uh, very, very fine file smooth the whole thing out and give it a really nice feel. The very last thing I'll do is uh, use my bow sander and this will contour to the, the shape and wrap around it and feel really good in the hand. I'll just keep going and feeling it until I'm, I'm satisfied with the way it looks and feels. And then of course, boiled in sea oil and paste wax. I just love the way it brings out the color in this oak. Yes, even though it's red oak, it is curly and uh, it really has a lot of figure. Uh, with the dark staining from the vinegar and iron bath, uh, I really like how this came out. Just it has a has a ruddy used look without being aged, and uh, very very pleased with it. I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet, but uh, I think I'll find something for it. So. <laughs> There you have it. Uh, whether or not you want to make a hammer that is functional for the shop, that you want it for adjusting planes, or you just want to make a cute little hammer because you have a cute little head, um, it's not that difficult. And you can apply these skills to a lot of other things, whether or not it's making a tote handle or a saw handle or any organic shape that you want to feel, you can do it pretty much the exact same way. 
So I hope you like this video. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep putting out videos. I know I say that a lot, but it is the truth. Uh, without you, this channel wouldn't be here. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon or help out, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind the scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.